Right, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly for the second of the basics series. Now, the thing that kept coming up time over and again was track. How do I lay track? How do I space my track? Should I put anything underneath my track? Um, what sort of track should I use? That sort of thing. So what I'm hoping to do in this video is just go through a few of the things that we would need to look out for in N-Gage, but please do be aware, whatever's in, in N-Gage is pretty much the similar to what's in double O gauge. Okay, hopefully you're gonna find this useful. Um, I don't wanna to spend too long, but uh, give you a flavor. Now, we're talking about set track and also streamlined track. Now, basically set track refers to the fact that the pieces are set, if you like. Um, if you see, this is a piece of straight and I can't bend it because the, the webbing is set together. That is fixed as a piece of straight. It obviously comes as a longer length than that, but it can't be bent. Whereas flexi track refers to the fact you can have long, wide, sweeping curves and you can buy track which is designed to bend. If you notice, every now and again, there are gaps in it. You see? And as you bend it, the track is allowed to curve. Now, it's entirely up to you what you choose. If you want to go for a, an oval of track, you have three sizes. Um, and I can't show you too much. I'll, I'll show you um, a little bit on the layout, but I don't have all the sizes um, for obvious reasons. But there is first radius, which is really tight. And a lot of locomotives are would struggle to get around them, particularly steamers where you've got big blocks of fixed wheels. They would struggle to get around first radius curves. Second radius, everything is supposed to be able to get around second radius, but it doesn't always. Depends on the loco and how free it is to, how the, the bogies move, the wheels move. Third radius and fourth radius are more recommended and I can show you those on my layout in a minute. But the best would be to go for flexi track and have long, wide sweeping curves where they're, where they're not far off straight. They've just got a slight bend in them. That would be the best. But if you're starting out, I would stick to set track and I would buy the pieces as Pico sell them. And then when you get a bit more confident, then start cutting bits up and chopping it about. Now, I've only got a range of points. I haven't got... Um, everyone by any means and this is just from my spares box but these are the smallest points you can buy in N gauge and you can get the same angles in, in double O except it's sort of twice the size obviously um, but I would avoid these if you've if you've um, these are ST5 and ST6 um, I think they are and uh, if you've already bought them and you're using them, well, fair enough. But to be honest with you, I've had a lot of problems with these in the past. You can't take a train um, coming this way where it enters the point blade section, um, huge amount of speed. Um, they turn because that is quite a sharp jerk off to the right or to the left. Some locomotives don't like it and they come off and you end up having to put the whole train back on the track again. So therefore I try to go for at least medium radius. You can see the difference there. And, the, and this curve is a lot bigger than that curve, uh, but better still, this, this point has been modified. So don't be worried about the wires on the side. This is what I've done to it. But you can see that is a lot better again. And when I alter and extend Piccadilly, I'm going to hopefully try and use more of these than those. I've got a lot of these already and I don't want to chuck them, but um, these would be a lot better. You can take a train at speed with these and it doesn't have any issues. Assuming that these these blades are switching properly, you know, there's no issues with these. Very, very good points indeed. But you can also get crossovers. And actually, I've got a, a short crossover. These are all right. Um, the only problem with these is that they're designed to work with those and uh, the angles line up, you see. If you can see the angles there, it's this would be parallel with that. That come with that. Okay, and they work really well in the same way. 
weirdly, you can't buy um, medium radius. You have to go to a double slip or a single slip. Um, you might have heard these words banded around and this is a crossover in the same way that is. With this, you can go from here to here or from there to there. That's it. But with this one, if you notice, these bits are curved here, whereas that one there angled. Yeah. So you can you can do the same thing. Go crossovers, you know, from one top corner, top right to bottom left and bottom right to top left. But you can also go around like that. So go top left, bottom left, top right to bottom right. And because this is a double slip, that means you can do both. If it's a single slip, you only go one direction. And that would be, um, you wouldn't have that bit of rail in there. It would be just a straight angle if that was a single slip. But obviously you put that whichever way you want it to be. Okay, um, I'll show you some third and fourth radius I've got on yes. my layout. This is fourth radius here, that's third radius. So second radius would be a tighter curve again. And first radius would be a tighter curve again. Second radius isn't too bad, um, but I'd try not to. First radius, I would try and avoid it like the plague. Um, a lot of locomotives don't go around it. I don't normally have a lot of problems with third radius and fourth. Most trains will go around it and even across the um, curve points here, which are set track, by the way. The streamlined tracks are the long radius points. Medium radius, I think, is streamlined. One of the things you're going to need if you go to spatial track, now, I mean, if I show you this, hopefully you will be able to pick this out. Um, but on the top there, it says streamlined. So again, that's if you um, if you ha are using very long sweeping curves, the trains can be closer together. Whereas if your curves are set track, particularly second and first radius, you put the track in. Um, to those positions. Now mine doesn't quite line up with these because it's, like I said, I do it by eye, but the idea is in there like that, and then you run it round and make sure that your track is the same distance apart. Okay, now to do this, you need to have your longest vehicles, whether that be container wagons or coaches, depend, doesn't matter. But the idea is that when you've got the trains on the curves, the coaches will overhang and the sharper the curves, the more they'll overhang. So if this was first radius, the overhang would be quite a lot. Um, so when the coach comes round, we have, an, we have an overhang this way as well. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, it's come off. So the coach overhangs here and there. So another coach has to be able to pass it without hitting it. All right, so that's the point of using one of these gauges. Right, now the other thing you need to be aware of, um, I know this is double O gauge track, but this is all I've got to show you this point, is if you buy second hand track, be careful you don't buy steel. And the reason for that is a, there's a magnet on the end of here, just there. So if I go to, see, it's attracting. Whereas if I try and do it with this one, the nickel silver, it doesn't attract. Um, the problem with this is that it rusts or corrodes at the very least, even it, even to the mildest sense. And you'll be forever cleaning it bec because um, the trains just can't pick up the current from underneath. So it's terrible. So avoid this. So if you ever buy track, secondhand track, make sure the advert says nickel silver. Now you can, if I put them two together, you can see that there is a slight difference in colour. This is more grey, that's the silver, and this is slightly more yellowy, which is the nickel silver. Sorry, this is the steel, the grey, this is steel, the yellow is the nickel silver, so hopefully you can see the difference there. I'm going to type in Pico UK. Now this would be exactly the same if you were on a laptop it doesn't because don't think because I'm on an iPad it doesn't make it makes a lot of difference it doesn't so this is the Pico website and it looks just the same on a laptop as it does on here let it load okay now once it's loaded up go to products and categories 
The website is a little bit buggy, I have to be honest. Once you've got that, you'll then notice um, all the different pieces of track that they do. So you want to, we're looking at N gauge, so go to standard and then N. If you want a different scale, then you can type in something else. So you'll now notice all of these uh, pieces of track that you can buy are all in N gauge. All right. And obviously there's loads. So you can see what each one is by looking at the scale. There's your, there's the code in each one. So ST3018 would be those curves there. And I will just find some points. So there's a curved right hand point there. There's a Y medium there, um, a single slip and so on. Okay. Now, the thing that's most useful is when you come to actually plan your layout and you've got a basic idea of the type of shapes you want, is to go to help and advice, and, and then if I can get it to do it, to cross, to turn out and crossing plans. And then here, actually, if you, you can see what that looks like. So, and you can download it. So for example, if we want um, an SL92 um, turnout or medium right hand point, I can click on that and have a look at it. That's what it looks like. And then if I want it, I can click download and print it out and it will print out full size. And then you can cut them out and then place them on your baseboard and then just arrange them to make sure that the track you want is the track you get. Um, I often find that don't matter how much planning you do, um, it never quite works out when you put it on the track or put it down with track. It's always something slightly different, either it doesn't quite fit and you have to adjust it. But uh, you know, if you if you to keep it really simple, if you stick to the set track um, and medium radium point, medius, medium radius points, don't use the short radius points as I've showed you. Um, because you'll have problems with your locomotives tripping up over them. Um, some of them will be fine, particularly when they're new, but as they get older and war wear a bit, then your locos will just trip over them and then, you know, derail. So I hope you found that helpful. So, like I said, just cut them, just download them, as many as you want, photocopy them, whatever. Pico wouldn't put this on their website if they didn't want you to do this. And then once you've decided on what you want, write down all the numbers, how many of each one you want, go to your local shop, buy it. Now, do be aware, as the current situation, though, Pico have only recently opened their factory again and they're catching up on production. So I don't know who gets stocked first, whether the smaller shops get stocked first or whether bigger shops like Hatton's and Rails of Sheffield get stocked first. I really don't know. It'd be worth a try and each when the little shops start opening again in a few weeks. All right. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. We'll go back upstairs and we'll have a look at Lane's piece of track. Right, before you start um, laying track, you need to make sure that your baseboards are dead flat and they are level with each other. There's, um, when you go into a board, there's no board sticking up one higher than the other. They must be absolutely level and flat, otherwise your track will not uh, sit properly when it goes over the top of that. So that's your first job. Secondly, is to buy yourself a roll of cork. Now. I'm using N gauge, so this is two millimeter cork. You can buy this from eBay. Um, now, some people um, put this over the whole of their baseboard. That is a very expensive way of doing it because you will go through this um, very, very quickly. Now, I I bought a roll and th it was about twice the size of this. I think there was 50 meters on this roll. I think it was about £15 at the time, but it's gone up by quite a lot since then. Uh, so if if I was to cover the whole of my layout with this, I wouldn't get anywhere close to uh, covering it. So there is a little trick which I got from Richard from Everard Junction. Myself a piece of card, which is 20, yeah, 20 mil wide for N-gauge. So 20 mil wide, and I think it's 30 mil for double O, I think, maybe even 40, I'm not sure. But um, 
by using that, that helps me to judge how wide to cut the strips. So I cut strips off, so I put that down there, with a knife cut down so I've ended up with a strip. All right, then the idea is that you then stick the long pieces on for the straights. It will bend slightly, but then when you go around the corners, cut little bits and stick each bit around the corner and then you can put your track over the top of that. You will save yourself heaps of money by doing it that way. So the only board, the only cork you've got on the track is directly under the track, not under the scenery where it's not absolute, where it's not needed. So right onto laying track. Now, if you choose set track, um, which is perfectly good for whatever you want, you will end up with a fish plate in there or a rail joiner. They're called the same thing and a rail joiner there. And all you do is you make sure that the bottom part of the rail, I'll bring that in to see, you can see it's got this extra flat bit on the bottom. And that sits into this bit here. So you've got to get both sides in. It's a bit tricky in N-Gage, but uh, they both will go in. You see, look, that's not gone in. So there we go, right, that's in. But I noticed that the fish plate isn't quite in the middle. So with a pair of pliers, I'll just move it across so it's it's lined up. Now, uh, but I want to join this end to that bit just there. Now, you can see that I've previously removed the sleepers from underneath the track, but I haven't done it on this part. So I need to turn that over. This is where my knife comes in handy. So I've just got, um, some people call them a Stanley knife, but this isn't Stanley by brand, but it's, you know what I'm on about it. Now I'm removing two sleepers, and because this is flexi track, that will come straight off. Now that is in, the end of that is in terrible condition, so that will need to be filed. So I've just got a, um, just a household file, and I'm literally always go, up and down never go side to side because you'll the, the track will burst out the chairs which are these little bits holding the track on and in n-gauge you really don't want that to happen it's a pain so i'm filing the ends of that then i can put some fish plates onto that now where fish plates are concerned, you'll need to get yourself packets like this. Unfortunately, I bought these a few months ago, many months ago. In fact, the price has gone up by quite a lot. In fact, I think I've seen some that are well over three pounds now for just the same thing. So it's gone up well over a 130%, which is, well, crazy. But um, if you're just using set track, don't worry about the plastic ones, but you will need some metal ones. They're the ones that will help you and conduct your electricity. Now this is a little bit fiddly, but at the end of the day, this is what N-Gage is, I'm afraid. So actually I'll put them on here as we've just filed that down. So I hold the fish plate in my fingers like that. And I then, if you notice, there's like a little lip at the end of the fish plate. Hopefully you can make that out. It's a tiny lip. So you put that lip underneath the, pit, the piece of track and push, just like that. Do the same on the other P, or you can actually put the two on the same piece, to be honest. Oops, this one's being a little bit more stubborn. Now that tells me, ah, that's what the problem is there. There is a little burr on the bottom of that, and that's why it's not going on. Oops, sorry about that jolt. Hopefully you can see the fish plates have not joined up. So what I'm going to do now is take some pliers and hopefully you can see this. I'm going to hold on to this trap because it's not fixed and I'm literally, like I did in the last video, pushing the fish plate so it's half on. Yep, that's got it. Just run your fingers over the top just to make sure that it has gone in. If it hasn't, you'll end up with a step and you'll feel it one way or the other. But not only that, if you try and lift the track one way or the other, you'll see 
that one hasn't connected just like mine didn't just then. Right, so once you've got that, then what you can do, and I'm not actually going to glue this down yet because I want to use a different piece of track, is to take some PVA on your on your brush and then just underneath, like that, all the way along, all the way along, all the way along, like that. And then once you've got it glued down or you've got glue on it, line the track up with the previously fitted piece of uh, cork and then put some heavy weights on top of it now i've got these um exercising weights which a lot of modelers do have and you put those on top like that but you might not have any exercising weights but chances are you've got a tin of food which you can equally use as well so any of those will do these are quite heavy these tins of food um, so baked beans or peas whatever you want carrots anything that comes in a tin is useful for a weight so you can put it on please make sure your power is not on at this point obviously before gluing um, because as soon as you put the put the tin on the track you'll short the transformer out of the uh, controller so once the track has been glued down and you're satisfied that it's solid you will then need to clean it so i suggest buying one of these this is a pico track rubber and then you can just rub that over the track it's a mild abrasive and what it will do is it will just mildly scratch the surface of the track um, which which then removes it's i suppose it's a bit like a sandpaper block to be honest but it's very very fine uh, it won't damage your track. These have been used for years and years and years. And, um, you know, some people will say don't use a track rubber because it scratches the track and encourages dirt. Well, it might do. But if you don't clean your track, your trains won't run. And uh, there are other ways of cleaning your track of which some people like, some people don't like. But I've never had any problems with these and a lot of modelers have them too so it's worth it worth the investment well i do hope you found that useful um, but if you do have any further questions please do get in touch and we'll see what we can do it might be a case i just answer you in the chat or it might be a case i refer you to a video one of mine or maybe something something that somebody else has done or i might be able to refer you to another modeler um, it, the options are wild and varied there I would strongly suggest getting yourself onto a Facebook group, Model Railway Facebook group, something like MRYCG, Model Rail YouTube Community Group, would be a good one, and also Model Rail Network, also a fantastic page. Um, once you've been approved, because you have to uh, request to join, once you've been approved, then you can ask any question you like, and people will do their best to help you out, I am sure about that. Okay, anyway. Um, top video is going to be the last basics video that I did on replacing the points which are to the left of the camera just slightly out of shot and the bottom video is going to be the third one about how I built New Mills Central Station. Thanks ever so much and I'll catch you soon. Bye for now.